let me say this. First of all, I, I imagine everyone has read or picked up a copy of this article from the Wall Street Journal. The party's left pushes for a seat at the table. And right in the second paragraph, it talks about this new phenomenon in the Democratic Party, which is that members of the Progressive Democrats of America, which is an activist group, the article says, an activist group working to keep the party true to liberal priorities. Well, that's true. But I would argue the Progressive Democrats of America are doing something more than simply keeping the Democratic Party true to liberal priorities. I think you're keeping the Democratic Party true to the Constitution of the United States. That's what this is. Now, I'm not Catholic, but this is my time for confession. Well, you are, you are in the proper setting, my friend. Okay. All right. I'm new to this confession stuff, so help me along. But in, in the context of impeachment, uh, I, I did not sign on. And before we go further, Keith and I, I think both of us share an enormous amount of respect for Dennis Kucinich. Oh, yeah. And, and the, the right thing. The, the leadership right thing. that he has provided. Yeah. And it would, it would not be proper to engage in any discussion without giving first to do to Dennis. Uh, I, I kept going back to my district and holding town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my district, every district has its own unique qualities, but, but mine is made up, I would argue, of some of the, many of, the most patriotic people in this country. I represent a district that has more people enrolled in Medicare than I think any other district in America. <laughs> More World War II veterans and Korean War veterans than uh, probably almost any congressional district. And I kept coming home and in town hall meeting after town hall meeting, I kept hearing from people, regular ordinary Americans, a whole bunch that had, like I said, fought in World War II in Korea. And people kept saying, Wexler, What's with you Democrats? When will Democrats have a backbone? When will Democrats have a bold response to an administration that was abusing governmental power? And when will you begin to hold hearings to hold the administration accountable? And for a short period of time, I bought into the argument Mm -hmm. that the Democratic leadership, as much as I respect them, I bought into the argument that, you know what, when the American people gave the Democrats a majority in 2006, that they were fed up with partisan bickering, they were fed up with no results, they wanted us to improve health care, they wanted us to get our troops out of Iraq responsibly, they wanted us to improve our educational system, they wanted us to do a whole host of things, and we were trying. Mm -hmm. And we were passing some very important bills, children's health, moving the minimum wage up. But the president kept vetoing almost every one of them. And I got to the point where I said, you know what? I got to start listening to my constituents. They're demanding accountability. And as well-intentioned as the Democratic plan was in January of 2007, to produce all these results for the American people. The president wasn't meeting us halfway. He wasn't meeting us any of the way. And in fact, we had a greater obligation to the Constitution than we do anything else. And, and I came to the realization, I came to the realization that I could not live with my own personal small piece of a legacy in the context of the last two years, let alone the eight years of the Bush administration, if I did not stand up and say that Congress has the responsibility to hold impeachment hearings, first for the vice president, mm -hmm. and then the president if the evidence went there. And I don't want to monopolize the discussion. Let me just stop with this. Keith and I, I think, have been a team with some others on this. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that there is credible evidence that this administration may have ordered the illegal use of torture in this country. That's 
right. and it ought to be investigated. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that this administration may have fired U.S. attorneys for political partisan purposes, and that politicizes the Justice Department in a way that there ought to be investigations. There's no doubt that this administration may have manipulated intelligence that brought us into war based on false pretenses in Iraq, and it ought to be officially investigated by the Congress of the United States. And there are several other issues. But I have become convinced that actually the single most important issue at this point in time in the context of the Constitution is the continual abuse of power by this administration with respect to executive privilege and the failure of this administration to answer before the Congress of the United States like every other administration on history has done go. before. Bob Wexler. Okay, you got one more. I'm going to close with this 30 seconds. We may not accomplish impeachment in the next five weeks, but we ought to still push for the inherent power of contempt to get Karl Rove and those other members of the administration and former members to answer to the American people, and we ought to have the courage to do it. Thank you so much.